If you are working with Cinema 4D and Redshift and you would like to have fast render view performance, I will show you which Redshift settings could speed up your workflow. As first step, make sure that you are using the latest Redshift build. As second step, if you have Open Material Library, incorrect material preview settings can significantly slow down Redshift's render view performance. Select Material and go to the Editor section. Here you can find Texture Preview Styles. Make sure that these settings are using the lowest resolution. So switch from default to the 64x64 64 64 option. And as next step, go to the Edit, Preferences, and in Renderer section is Redshift. In Redshift section, make sure that you are not using Hybrid Rendering option. Also, use only GPU devices and check out that CPU is not enabled. In User Interface section, you can find Material Previews options. Here I'm using Just, Off option, or When Rendered is Idle instead. I'm never using always on option because this causes redshift slowness. However, off option will completely turn off materials previews, so use this option only if you don't use material previews. And in case that you would like to see material previews, use when renderer is idle option. Also remember that huge amount of polygons, transmission depth, subsurface scattering, tessellation and displacement are very often producing longer render times and redshift slowness. So, if you are working with object which has heavy tessellation and detailed displacement, go to the redshift render view and use freeze tessellation and freeze geometry updates option as well. And as you can see, redshift performance is excellent now even I'm using object with high amount of polygons, fully procedural material with subsurface scattering and displacement as well. So remember that correct material preview, tessellation and correct geometry update settings can strongly speed up your redshift performance. If you are working with materials which are using transmission or subsurface scattering, you can very often see that it produces a lot of graying in render view, and you always have to wait until progressive passes cleans up noise. Also, you would like to be sure that these materials will have good looking colors and dynamic range as well. And in this case, go to the render settings and in redshift section, you will find global section. If you have graphic card which support hardware ray tracing, use this option. As you can see as color management, I'm using ASUS CG. As next step, I will go to the sampling section. As you can see, I'm not using automatic sampling and I'm very often using samples min 16 and samples max 64 instead. These settings are very effective. However, in case that you are using strong defocus or motion blur, these lower range of unified samples can easily produce more noise than usual. As next step, as you can see for redshift render view, I'm using just 64 passes and if is needed, and I have too much noise in render view, I'm using also Optics Denoiser. However, remember that Optics Denoiser, you're supposed to use just to speed up workflow and clean up render view, but don't use this Denoiser for final render. And as you can see now, we have significantly faster clean viewport even I'm using strong transmission depth scattering. But in case that you are working on really small details, as example on skin pores, which contains very small bump details, in this case, Denoiser can be contraproductive. Because when I will enable Denoiser now, as you can see, it kills huge amount of details, so it's very difficult to continue work on these smallest details. So remember that if you have problem with details visibility, make sure that you have properly set up Denoiser options.